As promised, here it is, Tintin, Secret of the Unicorn by Ubisoft. As stated in my previous video, it's based off the movie by Steven Spielberg, released in 2011, which was fantastic by the way. From all the gameplay I've seen, it actually looks pretty good, so let's jump right in. I'm playing the version on Xbox 360, however it was also released on the Wii and PS3, just to name a few. The single player campaign starts you off in this flying segment. Mm, I have no idea what the point is. Nothing happens. You're just flying through a lightning storm. It's not like you can kill yourself either. Oh! And that's it. You get knocked out and now you're back in the previous day. Hmm. Okay. If that's the game's idea of getting me hooked, then it certainly didn't work. In fact, I've got the bar set really low now. Anyway, we're in the market like the start of the film. Although this has to be the most depressing market in history. Half the stores aren't manned, there are way too many orange soda umbrellas, everyone just walks in a continuous loop, and why is everything so quiet? My game is no sound, that's why. Good start. Easy boy, good dog. Alright, maybe it does. I guess the programmers didn't feel like adding life to an already dead market. Snowy, why are you so interested in a model ship? You can't eat it. <laughs> So, Tintin finds the model Unicorn, and we get the first of many awkward cutscenes in the game, where for whatever reason, each character has a voice that doesn't justify their expression. I'm sorry sir, I'm not interested in selling it. Wait a minute, I'm a collector, I'll give you ten times what you paid for it. I'm sorry. Or in this guy's case has a completely fucked face altogether. Seriously, the character in this movie isn't supposed to look like that, which means someone completely fucked up the eyebrow coding. You know how I was talking about the bar before? Well, it's really hard to raise it higher when you find these general flaws in the very first level. Oh, sorry, second if you include the shitty flight simulator. But whatever, they're not game-breaking, right? Right? Well, I'm prepared to eat my tongue. So I give the ship to this guy and he gives us a book that tells us to turn the masts of the model unicorn. So I do that and, oh cool, a secret compartment. I guess I'll pull it out. Yep, the game has had a fucking aneurysm. So I restart the level and... Again? What is this? Was the, was, was that the whole game? Is there a sequel that I don't know about? This is just so weird, the game doesn't actually freeze because you can still pause and unpause. But it just stops at this part where you pull the secret compartment out of the ship. Is this a joke? I bought this game new as well, so there's no physical reason for it not to work, which puts the blame solely on the dumb cunt programmers who obviously didn't test play their shitty game. Ugh. I'll see you in two weeks. Alright, so I had to go on eBay and buy another copy of the game. This time I avoided the 360 and fear of the same bug happening. So I went with the Nintendo Wii version instead. And it works. Thank Christ. I was prepared to throw this script in the bin. So Tintin gets his ship stolen and we get our first taste of combat. And by combat I mean you shake the Wii controller and Tintin auto locks onto enemies. It's pretty trivial, but at least we got a working game now, right? <laughs> oh boy. I'm so glad I bought this on the Wii. Well, I guess now's a good time to talk about the gameplay. In a similar fashion to Destination Adventure, it's broken up into four different components. You have this monstrosity, you have the 3D free roam segment which you saw before, the stock standard vehicle segment, and a 2.5D puzzle platformer hybrid. Personally, I think the game starts to come into its own during these levels. You have to navigate through a series of trap doors and ladders, avoid enemies, and at times, king hit them. Or do a flying heel kick. Ah, oh, shit. Honestly, it's pretty funny when Tintin dies. This game has a remarkable lack of violence. Every enemy gets knocked out instead of getting killed, and the bazooka that they use in the movie is replaced with a slingshot. So seeing Tintin fall to his death is actually quite refreshing. The 3D roam parts are absolute shite. As shown in the first level and others, the maps are empty, uninteresting husks with random dead ends and lifeless NPCs. You can play as Snowy, but you'd rather play a uh, dog sniffing cocaine simulator. Did I write that? The vehicle segments are fine. There's nothing innovative about the controls. You get two buttons, move side to side and fire. You don't even have to accelerate. Once again, it's pretty funny blowing Tintin the fuck up. 
Throughout the game, Captain Haddock has a PTSD flashback to his ancestor Francis, who was fighting enemy pirates in a sort of railed sword fighting segment, which I only assume looks this fucked up on Wii due to the motion control. These levels are very entertaining, but for all the wrong reasons. I just don't understand how any developer could think this is acceptable for a video game. I mean, look at the way the NPCs jitter around, it's hilarious, but it shouldn't look like this at all. Honestly though, if this didn't have the broken motion control, these would be the most boring stages in the game. I mean, look at this, it sucks. I guess if you don't want to go to an arcade to play Time Crises or House of the Dead, you can always play this abomination. Actually, scratch that, this is, this is shit. I mean, look, this is shit. The boss battles, if you can call them that, are done in the platforming stages. Every time you're fighting first mate Alan, who wasn't really the antagonist of the film. I guess they couldn't get Daniel Craig to reprise his role as Mr. Saccharin. Oh, but wait, they still have Red Rackham in the game. But they had the Bird Brothers as the antagonists, who are in the comics but don't appear in the film. So is this even a movie game? Ah, oh, who cares. You run around and avoid the bombs he throws at you and then attack him with fireworks and then you fucking king hit him and that's usually the end of the stage. Yeah, I guess the only word I can use is childishly simple. While I think the whole game could have been compiled into these platforming levels, I appreciate the variety in gameplay and whether or not it was intended, it's a nice little throwback to Destination Adventure, which played out in a very similar fashion. In terms of storyline, it functions just like any other movie game. It does follow the story, but there's a bunch of random shit jammed in to make it a full length game. Like, do you remember that time when Tintin fought giant mutant jellyfish? Or well, what about that time where he threw a beach ball at a chandelier which then fucking crushed two guys to death? Yeah, look at that blood. I guess this game is violent after all. What about this level where he has to navigate through Freddy Krueger's rape dungeon? I can't critique a movie game for doing something like this because, well, it keeps the game from going stale. Like, can you imagine a movie game about Forrest Gump? You have a stage where he's running away from the bullies, obviously. You have a big level set in Vietnam, and then you'd have like a, a ping pong mini game. Um, and the rest of it, who knows? You'd have him go to outer space and fight the triads with DMX for all I care. The point is, making these kind of segues is absolutely necessary. That's pretty much it for single player, but that's not the whole game done. It also includes a Tintin and Haddock co-op mode, and, well, let's just say it's better than the campaign. By a long shot. It's all the fun of the platforming stages, only this time you can play with another person. It's more arcadey than single player. The characters have different abilities, like Tintin can use a grappling hook and Haddock can punch through walls. I love this game mode because it's just simply fun to play. There's no bullshit and it doesn't take itself too seriously. You also collect treasure throughout the stages. Go back to the hub screen and you can buy costumes with it. Oh shit. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? That would be everything, but there's also a bonus option in the menu showing everything you've unlocked from the campaign, so let's quickly check that out. Okay, all it is is a gallery of the NPCs and models from the game, with these dumb backstories added to them, as if we give a shit. This guy stole his first apple when he was two and robbed his first bank at 15. Well, I mean, that's pretty impressive actually. Well, what about this dumb cunt who fell from a donkey when he was a child? Well, you wouldn't have known about that valuable tidbit if you didn't read about it first. How about the knight? His only enemy is Rust. Damn, what a fucking boss. And that's it. Tintin, Secret of the Unicorn. Nothing special at all. If this game didn't have those 2.5D segments, which in fairness does take up a good portion of the game, it would be the most forgettable title in history. Everything is just so simple, childishly simple, to the point where even with the Wii controls, I feel as though I'm not utilizing enough buttons, save the A and B button and the occasional shake of the controller. Tied in with some of the lazy game flaws, especially during the cutscenes, and some of the unnecessary and pointless stages, as well as the unbelievable game-breaking glitch on the 360 version, I've come to the conclusion that this game is the product of a time crunch at Ubisoft, an attempt to shamelessly release the title in sync with the release of the film, with little regard for the robustness and overall quality, a situation that unfortunately is seen with lots of video games based on films. How would I fix the game from the ground up? Well, I'd rework everything in single player. I'd replace all the platforming stages with the 3D stages and leave the platforming exclusively for the co-op mode. These levels can be redesigned to be more faithful to the film rather than just these themed incoherent masses of platforms, trapdoors and ladders. 
The vehicle stages, oh, they're fine for what they are, but what they are is boring, so you want to find a way to make them more fast-paced and enjoyable, rather than just this. Which reminds me, Tintin having a gun would be cool. He doesn't have to kill anyone, but he can use it to suppress enemies or maybe knock them out. He does use guns in the comics and in the films, so I don't really see the problem with it. Finally, I'd scrap this profanity completely. Ugh. I take it back. There's nothing enjoyable about this at all. It's the worst thing I've ever seen, and frankly, it makes me depressed to be a human being, knowing that this fucking thing was released the way it is. And these bonuses as well. I'd swap out all these characters that no one gives a shit about and replace them with stuff from the comics. Maybe playable characters, attires, or vehicles that can be unlocked and used in-game. This is a Tintin game after all. Let's show a little love for those dedicated fans.